Alrighty, so today we're on a bit of a salvage mission. We're going to be using D-Mix Pro 5 to remaster an old Beatles performance from 1964 and take it from this to this. Let's do it. So this is a performance of the Beatles from the Ed Sullivan Show in 1964. Alright, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open up D-Mix Pro 5. I'm going to drag in our Beatles one track. I'm pretty sure it's in mono. Yes, it is. I'm going to listen to that. I wanna hold your hand. Now we're going to use DMix Pro 5 to extract the stems from this using their insane algorithm. So first thing we're going to do is click on this symbol. We know that this has vocals, drums, bass, and guitar. And in settings, I'm actually going to have all of the vocals on one stem. We could choose lead and backing, lead only, backing only. In this instance, we're going to use all vocals. I find it sounds the best. So we're going to go start. Now this is normally really fast, but I'm going to speed it up for the purpose of this video. And boom, there we have it. We have our vocals, drums, bass, electric guitars, and our residual. So the residual track is everything left over after the software has taken what it thinks is each of those things. Now, bear in mind, this is an old mono recording from 1964, so obviously it's not going to be the most perfect raw material for DMix Pro to extract from, but it's pretty damn good. So let's have a listen. So the original, let me just unmute it here, and this is what the original sounds like. Let's see how it does with the vocals. That's insane. Honestly, that it can extract that from something done in 1964 in mono is crazy. Let's check out the drums. But that's insane. All right, the bass. Absolutely deadly. And let's check out the electric guitars. So cool. And let's see what's left over on the residual. The residual almost sounds like a room mic. You know, it's got a lot of crowd and it's got sort of like the band in a room. Let me see to where it swells here. Let's see what's on the residual here. Yeah, crowd. <laughs> I can see myself using the residual to kind of fill any holes that might be left in the sort of immediate stems, but it's so good to have that. So let's put them all together. So all of them together sounds like this. Let me be your man. Take out the vocals. And it blows my mind how this software is able to do things like this. I honestly have no idea how it's able to do it. Automatically, more or less. Like those vocals have gone. You let me hold your let's see if I bring the drums and vocals out. Let's see what happens. Yeah, I mean, tiny little bit left in the residual, but still plenty to work from to remaster this. Okay, so next thing we're gonna do is select the tracks we wanna extract, which is everything by the original. I'm actually gonna keep the original as well so we have a reference. File, export, and export. Boom, it's that fast. Now we're gonna jump into Pro Tools and have some fun. Alrighty, so we've got everything in Pro Tools now. We've got all of our stems put in and we also have the video, which is really fun. We can kind of reference that as we go. So once again, let's hear that original play. And now let's have a listen to what I have done in the remix. Versus the original. When I touch you. Versus remix. It's pretty remarkable what you can do with this kind of software. So what you see is I'm able to mix these stems now because of the separation that DMix Pro 5 has afforded me. And it's also really interesting to see the little idiosyncrasies that happen within this mix. So first of all, I have to say that I imagine these mixes a lot of time are kind of done live. So there's a sort of a reaction to them, which is really cool. There are points where the drums come in and you can see that the drums get turned up like here. So if we have a look at the drum stem here, you'll see the drums gives a big swell, but then it kind of disappears off into nothing, which is really interesting. So drums on its own. So cool. And what's really interesting, actually, I did a little loop on this. This would be so cool for like a visual. Have a listen to this. Yeah. 
sick. So I'll show you, actually, let's, let's look at that loop. So this is with no processing. I mean, it sounds amazing. And then with some processing, like one of the big beauties to um, having separation like this, and because it's mono, is the ability to make it stereo. So one plugin I love to use is a plugin called MicroShift, which is here. And it makes a stereo image of the plugin, and it just puts it in both ears, which I love. So I'll show you without it. Very mono, and I'll put it in. So mono. And what I love about this software is like the performance is the same, everything remains true to the original, but now we can just make it a bit more high def, which I love. Okay, awesome, so that's our drums. Bass I didn't touch much, um, oh yeah, so here's a funny thing about the bass. So the bass was so sort of meshed up with lots of other things that were happening in the track, so I'll show you what I mean. And then you see it kind of drops off. Here's where the residual is genius. Because there's going to be some applications where it doesn't get everything exactly as you want it. Again, you're at the whim of the source material. But because we had the residual, I was able to roll off absolutely everything above a certain point and keep that bass in there. So here is what I have. One second now. Awesome. Let me show you that with no EQ on it. This is the rear residual. So it's like this amazing insurance policy, the residual. So all I did was copy the residual, roll off a load of high end, and it treated as like the bass help or the bass substitute, you know what I mean? So absolutely awesome. Uh, the guitars were really, really good. I actually loved what I was able to do here. I guess because it's an older recording and these frequencies were more sort of picked up. I always imagine like, you know, the old TVs, they always have that kind of mid-rangey sound. They're definitely in the guitar world. So the guitars I feel get really well preserved in these old recordings. So again, with no processing, very mono, because it is mono. And with processing, oh. Just amazing. Um, awesome, and then our vocal. Again, no processing, gonna be quite mono. I'm still in awe of this type of software, how it can do this, but listen to the separation in this and the vocals. Oh yeah, tell you so. I think you'll understand. Like this is as people are screaming in their face, recorded in 1964, and this software from 2023 is able to separate it to this level. This, is, this for me is the funnest thing about this software. This is honestly why I love being alive in 2023, because you can sort of peel back all the layers in this old stuff that feels like very much like stuck in that era, but this allows you to bring it in and, I don't know, just really appreciate it in a different way. That's what I love about doing this kind of stuff. I want to hold your hand. Oh, you hear John coming in there, or you hear Paul coming in against John on the, on the harmony. I want to hold your hand. I want to hold your hand. Insane. Again, all I have on this is a bit of EQ, a bit of compression, but most importantly, I have that micro shift in, making it a bit stereo. So here it is. I wanna hold your hand. I wanna hold your hand. Right in the middle, and then. I wanna hold boom. your hand. Awesome. With the residual track, then, I've just left it alone. I, I didn't feel like there was anything to do with it. It's just adding that little bit of extra sparkle to it. You know, that I, I always feel like this is kind of like the real life part as well. This adds that little extra magic. And then you put them all together, and you have this. <laughs> Versus the original. Original. Let me hold your hand. 
I can't I like it's like I can't describe to you how good it feels to be on the cusp of this sort of technology and I feel like this is sort of the magic sauce that we now have the privilege of being able to own and use. You can go and take a Beatles track that was recorded in 1964, what's that, like 50 years ago? More? And basically have fun with it, like remaster it. Um, so if I can do this with something that was recorded back then, like imagine you had a catalog of loads of your old recordings that you wanted to remaster. Or if you were working, for instance, in a label and you were task remastering, imagine having this sort of technology at your fingertips. They actually use this software to remaster some old Beach Boys records. Mark Linnett, or Lynette, um, he used this to remaster old Beach Boys tapes. So this stuff is being used on like the highest level of artists. So my takeaway from this is, you know, if it's good enough for Beach Boys recordings, then it's good enough for me. So again, this is one of the many uses you have for software like this. Being able to take any two track, any master of literally anything. It can be a vintage recording. It can be one of your recordings. It can be literally the newest Grammy award winning song. You can use this software to separate it, learn from it, remaster it, extract MIDI, do remixes. Honestly, the possibilities are endless. And having this as a desktop application that you can use offline. If your computer is slow, you can process it on a cloud. Um, but I just feel like so excited to be alive in 2023 to have software like this at my fingertips that I can do stuff like this. So I really, really implore you to go and check out DMix Pro 5. Go and get the trial. The link is in the description below and try it out for yourself. There is bound to be songs that you really want to hear. Like the first thing I did when I got this software was I dragged in Chili Peppers. I dragged in Led Zeppelin. I wanted to hear those drums in isolation. When the levee breaks, everyone talks about that drum loop. Well, now I can hear the drums after that drum break stops. Uh, I can listen to Slash's guitar soloed. I can listen to Kurt Cobain's voice on its own. I can take a drum loop and extract the MIDI and recreate it with my own sounds. I can take a drum loop from one of my favorite songs, extract it, and then write my own song to it and replace it afterwards. So from an inspirational point of view, it's brilliant. So enough of me blathering on about it. DMix Pro 5, it's out now. Go check it out and have some fun with this incredible new software.